Okay, now the next thing, right, that I want to what I want to talk about, which will be a slight digression, but then a, then a very very important notion is one that also is is one, which is of geometric geometric transformations, of of images. What this really means is that, see, for example, if you had a one D signal, right, you talk about suppose suppose I gave you a, I gave you a one D signal x of t, uh, then you know when you talk about the transformations, typically what kind of transformations do you do? On a one D signal, you may do something like x of uh, a t plus b, right? You could either scale, you know, you could squeeze or stretch a signal. You can translate a signal. You can do both. Right? Typically, the most general case is x of a t plus b. Okay? This is what you normally do with one D. Now, if you had an image, right, and suppose you wanted to do something like a similar. Now, you might ask, why? Why is this? Why would somebody want to change an image into something else? For example. See, as far as images are concerned, the kind of uh, the kind of transformation and, and this transformation is a very nice hierarchy. Okay, it's not it's not it's not as simple as we as we sometimes think. Okay, that's why that's why I'd like to spend some time on this. So it's not it's not you know it's not as straightforward as we as we as we assume it to be. So one of the simplest things right that you would have, that you would have seen is what is called what is called translation, right? Of an image, oh, translation of an image. Translation. What do we really mean by that? So we mean that if if your if your source coordinates are x, so it's like saying that I have an image. Call that call that a source image. I have another image which I want to which I want to which is which I, which I would like to generate, which is really a target image. Given the source image, I want to be able to build a target image. Okay. Now, under what circumstances do you want to do? For example, one simple example I can give you is this uh, is a zoom effect. Right. All your cameras carry what is called there's something called a soft zoom and there's something called an optical zoom right you would have seen in a camera those that carry an optical zoom are uh, you know they are more expensive because an optical zoom comes with a, comes with a lens whose focal length can be changed when you say it's a soft zoom right all that it is doing is right it is it is using an existing picture that it has already taken and it is trying to trying to trying to let's say let's say zoom in okay what that means is let us say that let us say that right, if i had somebody's face right occupying this entire source and suppose I said that you know what no no right I would like to see the nose you know in more detail or whatever then it means that a part of this image right is going to is going to fill this entire thing is going to fill this target correct that means your your face will get cropped of course you won't see the whole thing here that is the whole idea of zooming in so a part of this will occupy this whole grid okay now as something as simple as this we all like to do right even in a camera you sometimes ask right I'm gonna zoom in a little more. But if you are asking for a zoom that is uh, that is soft zoom, then what it is doing is exactly right. You know what uh, what it, what you know we will be doing here. That is a soft zoom. The other is an optical zoom, which I will actually, which I'll actually talk about. Zoom is just one such case. You might want to do other things. Okay. So in a translation, what do you do? If you have target coordinates, okay, these are these are the spatial coordinates. By the way, this is not the intensity. The intensity will be like it, okay, it at xt comma yt will tell you what is the intensity in the target image at the location xt comma yt. This is what you want to know. Given that you have a source image wherein all intensities are available at xs comma ys, where xs ys will go all over the grid. Okay, these are your spatial coordinates. Xs and ys, xt and yt are your spatial coordinates. One corresponding to source, another corresponding to target, and is is give, gives gives you the intensity uh, in the source image at that location xs comma ys. Okay. Now what you're asking is a transformation. When you do a simple thing, x t y t, what you're asking is, is equal to x s y s. Okay, suppose suppose you wanted to translate an image, you will say plus some t x t y. Now 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 the, the interesting thing, right? With respect, now when you when you write for one D signals, you no, know, it really seems like a straightforward thing, right? You just write you know x of x of uh, t plus b, and you're done. Now. In uh, as far as you know, images are concerned. Even if you ask under what situations, right? Can I ask you, if I take a camera and suppose I translate, okay? Uh, under what situations do you think that you will get a shift that is actually a global shift? See, right? One thing that you should notice is this Tx and Ty is independent of of Xs and Ys. It's going to be applied on all Xs and Ys, right? Whether I take zero comma zero or whether I take somewhere in the middle of the image, everywhere I'm going to you know, apply the same Tx Ty. Which is which is what is also true is with respect to one D. When I do except T plus V, do I change my B for every T? No, right? I just translate the whole thing globally. Okay, that's what that's what we call as a global shift. But as far as images are concerned, there can be what are called local shifts, and there can be what is called a global shift. Okay, and the whole idea, you know, when we when we when we try when we try to talk about geometric transformations is that you would like to go from one image to another, even if there are local shifts, right? You don't want to worry about them. But as long as there is one sort of a linear transformation that takes you from one to the other.
okay it's like saying that you know so just to just to, uh, just to set the tone what it means is that you know if on a certain day if i if i were to take an image of the iit campus right like they do you know uh, even now you know somebody wanted to wanted to iit madras to prove that uh, that you know we have actually grown enough number of trees on campus how do you going to prove that then you should have had some picture that was taken let's say 30 40 years ago of the campus and now you take why take let's say one more image and now you want to compare the two now it is impossible that you know you will go exactly to the same location where 40 years ago it was taken right you will take from somewhere nearby you will know that okay right here is where the buildings are and roughly you will take from there okay now you want to be able to match these two images right you can't directly subtract because they are they are not even aligned so what you will have to do is you know you'll have to do some kind of a rotation do some something you have to do okay so that so that there is one linear transformation that brings you from one to the other the whole idea hinges on being able to write that one linear transformation if there is more than one okay which is needed okay then it means that you know it's no longer the kind of thing that you would like okay so so which is why which is why these translations rotations and scaling that we that we are familiar with is the most simplest of all like when there is a, you know when there is a when there's a global translation all the pixel just you know shift by by a shift by a t is in ty then it means that i know that you know i knew that the camera was was right there okay looking at the ground below and i simply move tx ty but this tx ty which i'm talking about is on the is on the image plane the camera could have see moved by a larger amount okay you go farther for the same tx ty you'll have to do more no you'll have to move more right as you go farther and farther this is like uh, you sit inside a train okay and then you know when you get to see look outside as the train moves what do you think moves the fastest visually to your eyes the pole that is next to the train that you know it looks like it's fleeting whereas the hill right you know way behind looks like it's hardly moving right this is because this is because you are you know whichever is closer will tend to move faster right the same way when the camera is let's say close to the ground and if you move on the image plane you see a lot of movement but you go higher if you want to say see the same movement on the image plane you have to move much more okay but the whole idea is you could move in a manner that tx and ty remains constant for all the for all the pixels which is actually very very nice and elegant thing but then it may not happen always okay now the the next thing is next thing is actually a rotation and all this okay this in, this is all actually called an in plane translation in the following class i'll tell you what i mean by that a rotation i'll i'll specify that this is an in plane rotation okay please remember that uh, that that a camera can actually undergo a 6d motion okay you no know, it it doesn't have to just rotate like this it doesn't it doesn't have to translate like just like this it can go all the way like rx ry rz that means about the three axes you can rotate and then about these three axes you can translate you can go tx you can do ty and you can also go tz right come back and forth similarly you can go like this you can go like this and similarly rotation about each of the axes and right? you should be able to rotate an image like this which is in plane out of plane is like this right when you do like this or for example when you do like this right these are all out of plane rotations so but the ones that i am writing right now which you are most familiar with is the simplest one okay that i'm going to start with but then and then we'll kind of say up the uh, right up the, uh, and then we'll go up the kind of the hierarchy okay the, so the next case is like xt yt okay is equal to a rotation matrix let's say it's simply cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta xs ys Okay, this is a, this is a rotation, and you, and you all know that a rotation matrix is orthogonal. So if this is R, then R R transpose is simply identity, right? Every 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 rotation matrix is an orthogonal matrix. This is a very very specific case, by the way. This corresponds to in plane rotation, but even if you have a complete three D rotation where you have a sequence of rotation, something going about X, something going along Y, something going along Z, if you kind of if you if you were to concatenate all of them together, do a composition. that rotation matrix will also be orthogonal any any rotation matrix is orthogonal then there is scaling okay in general you can have what is called a what is called a inhomogeneous scaling which is like xt or a non uniform scaling which will look like xt yt is equal to let's say some a 0 0 b and then you have xs ys or in other words xt is equal to axs yt is equal to bys right this is this kind of non uniform because a and b are not are not the same but normally when you zoom and all these two are these two are identical okay now the whole point is right in the following class okay what we would like to do is we like to see how does one generate this if you think that you can go from the source to target just like that you are wrong okay you will end up with holes in the image which i will talk about so what is normally done is you start from the target grid and come back if you think that you know if you think that we will operate this equation right here put x s y s and try to get x t y t and simply assign intensities you will end up there is no there is no the right you don't have a guarantee that every every location here you will be able to you'll able to hit that location 
you might end up with holes in the target okay these are things that we'll talk about in the next class